The Mars exploration missions launched in 2003, successfully landing two rovers, Spirit and Opportunity, on the Red Planet. The mission's objective was to search for clues to pass water activity on Mars. The mission also included three previous landers, the two Viking program landers in 1976 and Mars Pathfinder probe in 1997. Both rovers were given an expected lifespan of just 90 days due to the notorious dust storms present on the surface. Spirit lasted an incredible seven years, surviving until 2010, yet mysteriously, Opportunity is still functioning to this day. This is due to several events which have become known as cleaning events, which over that last 14 years have been mysteriously cleaning the rover's solar panels. Designed to go offline during the night to save energy, it is during these hours that something or someone has been helping to keep our rovers running. Opportunity has since been given five mission extensions, which it has successfully completed. In July 2007, during the fourth mission extension, severe Martian dust storms blocked sunlight to the rover and threatened the ability of the craft's survival. However, when the dust storms lifted, they revealed that something had cleaned the rover of nearly all debris. On May 1, 2009, during its fifth mission extension, Spirit became stuck in the soft soils of Mars. After nearly nine months of attempts to get the rover back on track, including test rovers on Earth, NASA announced on January 26, 2010 that Spirit was retasked as a stationary science platform. Strangely, it seems, because the rover was not moving, it missed subsequent cleaning events, leading NASA to lose contact shortly after. Most recently, Opportunity has seen a surge in energy after a cleaning event in March, the Martian month coincidentally resulting in a power boost of 70% when compared with power levels at the start of this year. And now mission scientists have released a self-portrait photo of the Mars rover. When compared with the dust coverage at its worst, the difference is nothing short of dramatic. Having just survived its sixth Mars winter, thanks to the most recent cleaning event, Opportunity now has solar panels that are as dust-free as they were when they entered the Martian atmosphere. Just what exactly has been cleaning the rovers on Mars? Covert astronauts? Or maybe it's aliens? Whatever it is, we may never know. In July 2012, a curious Google Earth image was discovered by Russian UFO researcher Valentin de Tarive. The image quickly made its way around the media, with varying reactions, Andrew Fleming from the British Antarctic Survey told the UK newspaper The Mail Online that the object was clearly a simple crevasse in the ground. They can be tens of meters deep, nothing unusual, it's certainly not a UFO. Well it seems he may be right, however, an image purporting to be from the same site taken one year earlier has been uncovered. Researchers looking at previous satellite images of the same site taken in April and December 2011, found what appeared to be four massive vehicles parked in the snow, pointed towards a mysterious object. There appears to be more than a simple crevasse going on in this image. What appears to be going on is that a huge scientific research center has been deployed to a meaningless location in an icy desert. Which just so happens to be by an object and strange feature in the ice, that looks all for the world like a crashed aircraft pattern, only for it to completely vanish a year later. What should we make of these earlier satellite images? While some reports identify the shapes as tanks, if they really are vehicles, they're massive in size, probably around 70 feet in length. There are no tire tracks, but they could have been covered by snow or blown away. They look more like research centers, also note the drift patterning around them towards the object, is this camouflage canvas, why are all the drifts in the same direction and none on the other side of the vehicles? Is it a crashed alien craft? If it was, I would have definitely filled in the hole afterwards. Uparts, the an acronym for out-of-place artifacts, objects often found in extraordinary places, inexplicable in nature, and repeatedly dismissed by any who conform to mainstream institutional timelines for Homo sapiens. According to these, apparently already laid out chronologies specifically for man, the immense age of some of the out-of-place artifacts make their existences simply impossible to explain. 
The Nampa doll, for example, a favorite upart of a number of antiquarians and alternative historians alike. Found deep within the Earth's sediment, pumped to the surface, amongst the sediment which had been resting there for at least two million years, this small clay figurine, even adorned with surviving details of the fashion at the time of its creation. And although fascinating, this video does not focus upon zinc vases dynamited out of stone quarries or iron pots found in 500 million year old coal seams, or even the imprints of chariot wheels found deep in mines in Russia. It pertains to a modest artifact, a simple mortar and pestle once found by a J. H. Neal. And although today mortar and pestles are not the most interesting of utensils, it is their extreme ages which make them remarkable finds. Confirmed as being of immense age, this mortar and pestle was found left in situ, discovered by a Mr. J. H. Neal in tertiary deposits dating back almost 33 to 55 million years. And just like that of the iron pot, found in the foundry, dated at 500 million years, felt compelled to create their own personal affidavits regarding the events and the legitimacy therein, no matter how hard it was to explain. These men felt compelled to do all they could to prove the legitimacy of said discoveries. On August 2, 1890, J. H. Neal signed an affidavit swearing his discovery to have been 100% legitimate. Mr. Neal declared that it is utterly impossible that these relics could have reached the position in which they once lay, unless it was at the time the gravel was deposited and present, yet before the lava cap formed giving a dating of around 33 million years old. How old is our species? Where do our origins lay? Within this vast, ancient, and seemingly infinite universe? Have we, as Earthlings, experienced ancient cataclysm? An amnesic event as so many ancient texts write of? If yes, then to what level of sophistication did these now lost ancient ancestors once reach? sophistications far too advanced for any mainstream publication to ever publish. It is a reality that the continual discovery of such artifacts are slowly proving was indeed a reality, no matter how difficult it is for any institute or individual historian to accept as a reality. It is an upart which we find highly compelling. There have recently been some astonishing academically contradictory discoveries unearthed throughout Europe. Archaeologists have been discovering a network of underground tunnels, apparently somehow cut throughout the Stone Age, which cover the territories of Spain, Turkey, and most of the European continent. Their approximate age, according to funded archaeologists, is no less than 12,000 years. Yet how people living within the Stone Age, people without any form of metal tools or chisels, managed to cut thousands of miles of tunnel systems is clearly a considerably contradictory mystery. Thousands of underground tunnels stretching from Scotland to Turkey that have, predictably, placed the many submissive, order-taking funded scientists throughout the academic world at a dead end to explain. However, if one presumes, as the evidence we share here on our channel often suggests, that a past, now lost, highly advanced civilization once flourished here on our Earth, their creation is less of a challenge to explain. Yet the purpose for their existence will remain an enigma. Were they created by a group attempting to hide from something? Or possibly, they were ancient smuggling tunnels left by members of this lost civilization once used to smuggle items from ancient settlement to settlement found throughout Europe. German archaeologist Dr. Heinrich Kusch, in his book Secrets of the Underground Doors to the Ancient World, states that the tunnels were dug beneath hundreds of Neolithic settlements all across Europe, and the fact that so many tunnels have survived indicates that the original network was much larger than that which still survives. Quote, in Bavaria alone, we discovered 700 meters of these underground tunnels. In the Austrian Styria, we found 350, and throughout Europe there were thousands of such tunnels, from the north of Scotland stretching to the Mediterranean itself." End quote. 
The fact that these tunnels have been identified as having been cut at least 12,000 years ago should indicate to all those still with the capacity of critical thought that they are undoubtedly far older than this, as to state that they were somehow cut by people with literally no tools to their disposal, to us, seems laughable. The tunnels are all relatively narrow, being about 70 centimeters in width, just enough for an adult man to travel through. In some places, there are small rooms, storage chambers, and seats, clearly indicating that these cave systems were used by a number of people at a time. How did our ancient ancestors create such an awe-inspiring network of tunnels without the utilization of some form of tunneling equipment, lighting, and indeed smelted metal tools? It is not surprising to us or anyone who has paid attention to the limited tale of events put forward by academia that these tunnels remain a perplexing ancient artifact for them to explain. Yet we feel they are clear evidence of a past civilization, having crudely cut these tunnels possibly for some nefarious reason we are yet to unravel. They are undoubtedly highly compelling. Homes Towns, religious structures, an entire living infrastructure of a once highly successful, highly capable people. Managing to expertly fuse their existence harmoniously with the surrounding environment, creating structures which left little, if any, impact on the surrounding landscape, structures still usable even to this day. Located within Abanque, a province in the region of Apurimac, Sehuite has been conveniently dated to the period of the Incan Empire between the 15th and 16th centuries AD. However, like many sites dotted around Peru, and indeed the world, an explanation as to how these cultures achieved such wonders with such primitive access to construction or tools is not forthcoming. Compared to other Incan sites, Sehuite is also a complete ruin, leading the more observant, and indeed the free-thinking, self-funded geologist among us to suspect that it may actually be even older than the pre-Incas responsible for Machu Picchu. Yet the most noteworthy object at Sehuite, and the reason for our video, is its monolith. A mysterious boulder drenched in intricate, purposely placed carvings. Interestingly, the word Sehuite originated from the Quechua word Sehueta, which translates as place of orientation. The site is located on the top of a terraced hill. Dedicated research has also revealed that the site was once home to an enclosed sanctuary. Yet all that remains of this sanctuary today is a few leveled platforms and the monolith. It contains more than 200 geometric and zoomorphic figures, including reptiles, frogs, felines, topographical hydraulic models, complete with terraces, ponds, rivers, tunnels, and irrigation channels. The functions or purposes of the stone are not academically known, yet others suspect it was a map of the once existing complex created by a culture able of moving tremendous weights and carving stone with relative ease. Researcher Dr. Arlen Andrews Sr. believes the monolith was used as a scale model to design, develop, test and document the water flow for public water projects, and to teach ancient engineers and technicians the concepts and practices required. Quote, the rock was edited several times with new material, either altering the paths of the water or adding routes altogether." End quote. Clearly a remarkable artifact left by a remarkable civilization. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.